Welcome to FaithWorks, the enlightening and empowering program that builds your faith to help you overcome every single challenge in this life. My name is Kaude Adeshoga. I'm your host. I want you to sit back, listen, and be blessed. God bless you. In view of moving forward, there are one or two things we have to understand about the demand of God for us to move forward in life. I was telling a mother that the husband died. She was crying. Later she talked to her and I went to talk to her. People thought I would console her. I said, you are crying. I said, your case is not to cry. Your case is how these children will make it. Say, hey, say, hey. I like it. As they buried and 40 days have passed, the cry in public has ended. You will miss him, oh. I'm not saying you miss him. But right now, you have just had a prayer ministry. That what this man could not achieve in his lifetime, you will finish it. And when you enter heaven and you bring the report, and he asks, Hi, so and so, this, this, say, well done. Hi, so and so, this, not crying. You can't move forward. Like he said, hey, I, I said, Yeah, it's a tiberi. If they are armed robbers, you will pray them to be pastors. There's nothing God cannot do. So for us to move forward, one thing we must understand is that we have to get certain traits from God. In Genesis chapter 1, the Bible says, God appeared from heaven to the earth he had created the heaven and the earth. We don't know what happened between verse 1 and verse 2. The Bible says the earth was, was without form and void. God will never create anything without form and void. The Bible says God is a God of decency and order. So there was chaos on the earth. If it was man, we would know what happened between verse 2 and 3. But because he's God, and this is the man said we have to imbibe. In order to move forward. Because he's God. We don't know what happened until we're reading the scriptures later. That Satan was cast out of heaven. And when he was cast out of heaven to the earth, he destroyed the earth. The Bible says, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Verse 2. And the earth was without form and void. There was darkness over the face of the deep. That doesn't look like something moving forward. And the spirit of God moved over the face of the waters. And God said, I thought God would say, wow. When I created this heaven and this earth, I knew what I did. I knew how I set it. No wonder I said, approach me without complaining. Come with your request. I remember a lady was telling me, say, but it's okay. I said, what? Hmm. So I'm approaching 50. I said, well, what's going on? Say, pray well. Oh. I said, what's going on? Uh, <laughs> I'm praying 50 or anything can happen. No. Is there a request? That's actually a threat. And like my grandfather would say, the goat that stamps his feet twice for his owner. So what's he going to do? The owner can take your hand and tie you to a tree. What are you going to do? So all the stamping of you, what's it all for? It's for show. It's empty threat. You want to take God to court? Rather than saying, oh God, look upon me with mercy. Have mercy on me and help me with it. Jabez is interesting, God. Abi? Praise God. And verse 3, God said, let there be light. We have to begin to think of solutions rather than the crisis and the situations we have found ourselves in. I was talking to somebody diagnosed with cancer in the brain. Doctor gave him less than two weeks to leave. When I met with him, about two years now, when I met with him, I said, you know, cancer, this cancer of the brain, naturally is a death sentence. So I'm going to treat it as I'm treating death. So I told him what to do. He did it. Those who had the surgery after him, most of them are dead. 
Those who are diagnosed before him dead. Those who are diagnosed after him dead. He's probably the only one alive of his, um, that time. So he was saving for a surgery. They had to drill the skull and remove the tumor from the brain. So I was talking, he called me, was it yesterday or day before yesterday? I was telling him on the phone. I said, oh, have you done the surgery? Because I told you, before you do the surgery, let me know. He said, no, pastor, there's no need for any surgery. I said, what's happening? He said, all the traits, the pains of the cancer, they've all disappeared. So it's all gone. So the only trait now, the only issue now is he also had this problem with the sight, is the sight which we're um, praying concerning. And then he began, you know, talk and on and on. I said, I'll see you next week. When I see you next week, we'll end everything. Immediately I said that I knew instantly what he must do. And the sight will be restored. At one time he sat, he said, well, I said, hey, if you stay like that, you drop dead. <laughs> Don't enter any pity situation. You know, I, I, there are certain traits I like in the Bible. One of them is blind Bartimaeus. He was born blind. He lived by the side of the road. He was a beggar to sustain. This one, you are complaining of traffic to go to work. I am complaining that the AC in your car is not cooling well when you are coming from work and you are seeing any salary. Blind Bartimaeus was not that. He had nothing to complain about other than he has to stay by the roadside to even beg. You're not even begging to feed. But your complaint is, Lord, how can I be driving this car and I'm sweating like this in this? When this AC is not cooling well, you know. <laughs> That's what you're complaining. When Bartimaeus, when Jesus was passing, remember, there are two things I want to take note of today. Your opportunity in 2020. And your mindset you have to work with. So I kept saying, I'm not going to remain like this. Never. I am not born for such a life. I'm not born. Elijah was a man of like passions. I am not born to be like this. Some have theirs young. Some have theirs in their prime. Some have theirs old. I will have mine. Whether young or in my prime or old, I will have mine. When Jesus was passing, I'm lumping one and two together. The Bible says, he asked, what's the commotion? Jesus of Nazareth, he began to scream. How much they shut his eye will not shut down. That's a man that is tired of man Moriah that want to move forward in life. He said, I'm not going to shut down. I'm no, no, no. He began to scream, making noise, obstructing everybody. Till they told him, rejoice. He said, Peter said, shut up. He sended for thee. He didn't end there. Jesus asked, what do you want me to do for you? Because this noise you are making is more than the noise of the whole crowd. One person's noise is drowning crowd. So there must be something important on your mind. What do you want? Say, I may see Rabboni. That I may see Rabboni. Number one thing you must do, you must believe 2020 is your year. You must believe it is your time. You must believe you are going to advance. You must believe what you have never believed. You have to think like God. Set your mind like God. He asked Ezekiel, can these bones live? Don't answer like Ezekiel. God, you don't say, yes, they will live. Can you come out of this 200 million? They say, yes, God. Without a salary, I will come out. I will not only come out, I will not be a millionaire. Wow. Can you still have to say yes? Don't say you know it. We both know. It's not only you. I too know. The man in Matthew 8, the leprous man approached Jesus and said, I know you can heal me, but I'm not sure if you are willing to heal me. Jesus said, I am willing. Be thou cleansed. He approached God with that mindset. The first thing is your mindset must change. Like Job. My change, not his coming. 
My change has what? Has come. My change has what? Has come. My change has what? Has come. You have to carry a very positive mindset all throughout. You must believe what you did not believe before. Let me ask you one question. Moses was a mighty man. In Egypt, he shook Egypt. At the edge of the Red Sea, a man that's witnessed 10 plagues, I expect him to be talking the miraculous. I expect him to say, all of you, relax. We're walking on the water. And then God said, no, you're not to walk. You're to walk on dry land. I expect something like that. If you raise your hand, frogs you have never seen in your life, fill the land. You raise your hand, a whole sea turned to blood. You raise your hand, the firstborn of your whole nation die. You raise your hand, the whole place becomes dark for three days. Where you are staying is light. I don't expect you to stay at the edge of the sea and be saying, stand still. Let's see what God will do. What's the meaning of that? Are you getting what I'm saying? I don't expect that from you. I expect to be proactive. And God must have told him, what's wrong with you? He telling them this story of stand still to do what? My friend, move into the sea. You must be ready to move into the sea. Did you hear me? You must be ready to advance into the sea. That's the mindset you must carry. If they say your child has been sick, and, you know, always in hospital, say, no, this 2020, that sickness will end. <laughs> it will pass 2020. Don't worry. Don't worry. This sickness of up and down. 2020, it will not happen. How? It's not my business. It's God's business. Hey, this sickness, again, that one will continue till 2000. That's the mindset in 2020 to move forward. Am I communicating? Even when people make more Christian men, ah, is your child sick again? Don't worry, this is the last phase of it. It will pass this year. I can assure you. You don't build a hospital low because we will patronize you. That's a guarantee. Kai. We won't patronize you. We won't. You won't. We won't. If we visit you, it's to encourage you so you can make money because our type will spend money on you again. I was talking to my mom. She said she's feeling slight pain on her leg. I said, let me take you to the hospital. He said, the money I'll make in 2020 is not for hospital. It's for God and for myself. I saw the pain. I said, don't worry to go. It will not happen. I said, what I need to give to make it go, I will give it. That is the mindset for this year. Are we together? Yes, that is the mindset for this year. Yes. People wondering, what's, God, what's happening to this person? What's happening? Ah. Agbaja is bold, though. Eh? Ah. It's now becoming bold. Number two, look out for opportunities and believe they will come and they will come. You know, in 1 Corinthians 2 or so, it says, God has chosen the foolish things of this world to confound the wise, the base things, to confound the mighty, the things that are not, to bring into existence the things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. Do you desire to live and operate God's way of doing things? Do you desire to understand how faith works? Fundamentals of Faith is a book written by Coyote Adishoga. It teaches in simple terms how to operate the God kind of faith that helps you overcome all hurdles of life. Fundamentals of Faith is available for purchase at Trem Bookshop Obani Koro Lagos and Bible Wonderland Stadium Surulere Lagos. Get a copy today. Wait, woman say if it's a stone, the baby will grow up inside the stone in my womb. When it's mature, I will give back to the baby. <laughs> they say, what's wrong? I said, listen carefully. If it's a stone in my womb, he said they can bring out children from stones. The, wood, the stone will be the covering of the womb. The baby will grow inside the stone. At maturity, it will come out. Say what? Say this year. Not this year. This year. It will happen. You will see it happen right under your nose. I ask myself, when Joshua asked the sun to be still and the moon, did an angel appear to him and say, say this? Did God speak from heaven? Say, Joshua! 
It will soon get dark. What are we going to do about it? No, it just they got to where the Yoruba was. Oh, ha. It was between the rock and the hard place. And he had to take a decision and a step of faith and announce before the people, which if it fails, that may be the end of his leadership. Say, boom, be this, son, be this. And the Bible said, God hearkened to his voice. Obey the voice. God is waiting for you. Nobody is waiting for God in 2020. God is waiting for everybody. God, no man is waiting for God. Those are waiting on God. If anybody told you that's fallacy, God is waiting on you. There will be opportunities. Now, this is where we need to pray. Because the opportunity may not really look like an opportunity. The opportunity may not align itself with the order we have created by ourselves. The opportunity may not present itself the way we have been structured it needs to be presented. In the case of Ruth, Ruth proposed to Boaz. That is not right in a conservative world. For a woman, you say, give yourself some respect. I mean, so that if tomorrow there's quarrel, the man will say, at least you are the one that proposed to me. <laughs> Did it look like an opportunity? No. He met with Boaz and did what she did, meaning, I want to be your wife. And today, she's the great, great grandmother of Jesus. The opportunity didn't look like opportunity. It looked slightly immoral, looked slightly demeaning. I'm trying to find other words to put. That's why in your mindset, as you open up to God, my advice to you, don't make any law for yourself. There's not in the word of God. Don't make any law. That is not in the word of God. You know, for example, Lord, say, ever, I can marry, my children can marry <coughs> Palestinian Hamas. But with what I have seen, that's what you have seen. That's what you have seen. That may be the solution for our own which is the crisis for your own. What I'm saying, be open-minded. Opportunities will come, many of which will not look like opportunities. And here we're going to pray this morning and ask God to open our eyes when these opportunities come. When it was time for Rebecca to marry, if the eldest son of Abraham, when he went to look for a wife for Isaac, if Isaac was in the convoy, I would have understood that Rebecca said, when they said, give us water, she said, ah, <laughs> it may be that guy <laughs> they are preparing for. Let me water it. There was no guy. He was an old man. There was no young guy. The young guy is now red miles away in, Mes in a, 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 from Mesopotamia. So she can't say she saw Isaac. and that's what she, she just watered out of a sense of virtue hard-working, and selflessness, and was her window for marriage. That's how some people will marry. No, it was Isaac that was there. I said, please, can you water? And they said, eh, fine boy. Hey, hey. Any other train outside camel? You go, your train, your, should I, should I bake your camels? Should I wash the, all the goats, anything? Even your clothes, let me wash it. Wear my own. Spend the time it gets dry. But it was a window for marriage. Lord said, I will answer all prayers this year. Listen. I will intervene in all crises. But on my terms, not yours. Meaning, he will not change the rule for anybody. Meaning, he will do it the way he wants to do it. You are the one that must align with his way. I did say, ladies, go and propose to men. That was how it happened to Ruth. And that was not normal. But that was a window.
Amen. I think that's a good place to fast and pray. One can take one day. Even if we have so many lined up, it won't reach 200 days, don't worry. Let's take one day to fast. All of you take one day this month. Fast and pray. And what is it you are praying about? Because Jesus fasted and prayed. He knew what he was fasting and praying about. Esther called for a fast. She knew what she was fasting. Don't just fast. And the prayer is, Lord, when my window opens, help me to see it. Help me to seize it. I've said it. Disasters don't just happen. There are opportunities missed in life. Also, breakthroughs don't just happen. There are windows and opportunities seized. While disasters are opportunities missed. Amen? So make out time to fast and pray for one day. From morning till evening. And the prayer point is, Lord, open my eyes to see my opportunity that you have brought my way. Jesus said, oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how I long to gather you as a hen gathered her cheeks, but you would not. For you would not see this day of your peace that makes for your peace. I have come for your peace, but you have rejected me. Why? Your eyes have been hidden. Your eyes are closed. When I leave, another will come. Who would destroy you? And that happened. Your eyes will open to the carriers of your peace. Amen. Men and women, God will send your way to help you in life. Your eyes will open. Amen. You will receive them Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Every other messenger from the kingdom of darkness, you will reject them Amen. in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. One thing about God's messengers, they come in Unpleasant packages. And Satan has, <coughs> I believe, excuse me, <coughs> I believe Satan started branding. I believe it. It's, he, he invented branding. Because when Jesus came, they were asking, can this be the Messiah? This one doesn't look like Messiah. He was the Messiah. When the fact comes, they always accept him because he's always well packaged. Satan knows packaging. When you see fake husbands, fake husbands, when they show up, they have everything from day one. They are complete, head to toe. Everything is in order. Praise God. Amen. They don't forget that they should open the door for you. They'll remember. It's the genuine that says, oh, sorry. I forgot. <laughs> then he opens the door for you to see. The fake will not forget. They don't, oh, Jesus, praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Jeremiah 76 says, Cursed is the man that leans on the arm of flesh. For when good comes, he will not see it. Why? It will not come in a package called good. But you will see it. You will receive the carriers of your peace. You will seize your opportunity in the name of Jesus. When Zacchaeus' opportunity came, his kinsmen shouted him down. But he did not quiet. You need tenacity. You need boldness. You need audacity in 2020. When the roof is falling down, say to yourself, we'll erect another one and another. We had two floors. We'll erect four floors. When everything is collapsing and all hope is getting lost, you will not behave like David who was crying with the people. The Bible says he wept till there was no more strength in him. He did not move forward. Then he consulted the urim. He said, God, what do I do? God, 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 told, God told him, pursue, overtake, and recover all. That's not crying. He gathered the army and he pursued and he overtook and recovered all. You have to be bold. You have to be strong. It's the time of the strong. It's the time of the audacious. It's not the time of the weak. Amen? Lord, make you strong. Say, be strong in the Lord 
and in the power of his might. Be strong in the Lord. This is the time to be strong. Why? The days are evil, and we are in the evil day. In Isaiah 60, it says, Arise, shine, for your light is come, and the glory of God is risen upon thee. For behold, while you are rising and beginning to shine, you will see darkness around you, and gross darkness envelop you round. Luke 21, 22 says, Look up! Don't look at the darkness for your redemption cometh. I believe you have been blessed by that message and I know your faith has been built up and I know all those challenges in life are all going to fall before you in the mighty name of Jesus. I want you to know Hebrews 12 says Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. You need him in this walk. And so if you're out there and you don't have Jesus in your life, I want you to say after me, say, Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you're the only begotten Son of God. Come into my life, be my Lord and my Savior. It's as simple as that. Displayed on the screen is diverse information on how you can interact and reach out to us. Take advantage of it, and I'll be expecting to hear from you. Till I come your way again same time next week, I want to tell you, don't give up. Faith works. It's working, and it will work in your life. God bless you.